Yes, people, how are we all doing? So in this episode, I'm going to be talking about what happens when Category A high security inmates are transferred into a new establishment. Now, when I say Category A high security, it's also known as double cat A. And the Category A inmates who are high risk means that exactly like it says high risk so the category A inmates which are high risk every hour of the day the cells have to get checked so every hour of the day they'll be coming around to do the checks i mean when they do checks in high security prisons the cop be lads and the um different things <clears throat> when they come around they're only checking on you on the mornings and on a night time or on meal times as well like after dinner and after tea when they're doing the roll count they'll come around check just your standard roll count but for the category a high security inmates they are checked on every hour to ensure that they're still in the prison and they haven't escaped now when i was in here chimp franklin the high security prison up in durham what used to happen was you knew when there was someone coming into the prison who was cutting a high risk because majority of the time you were banged up and you would hear the helicopter and everyone knew when the helicopter was hovering over the prison that someone was being transported into the prison from another prison sometimes it would come from maybe full sutton or the other high security prisons which is whitemore long lawton and wakefield but everyone when they used to hear the helicopter would be up at the windows looking out because up on normal location you could see onto the other wings and when someone was getting transported up into the prison after you've heard the helicopter everyone would be looking out to see if you could see who it was coming into the prison and when these type of inmates are coming into the prison you know that they're the the top level tier of criminals unless it's the types of that's going up down onto the vp wings which there is the cat a high risk prisoners as well which go down onto the vp wings and the vp wings is the vulnerable prisoner also known as the nonce wings the bacon wings whichever word you want to describe them as because there is a few different names for them type of prisoners and a lot of the time up in the northeast they're referred to as bacons on the bacon wing and i'll just tell you a little fact about why they call it bacon because obviously when you're first in the when you're new into prison and you're hearing all these different slang terms and you're thinking and you say why do they call them bacons because bacon comes from a pig and a pig is a beast and a beast is a vp who was down there for heinous or heinous crimes against children majority of the time but there is the other ones um that are in like serial killers and that type of prisoner is down on the VP wings. But it's also people from normal location that have been housed down there for their own protection. That have been either involved with drugs and they can't pay the debt. Or they've informed on the other inmates. Grassed on the other inmates. And these are the type of prisoners that are also down on the VP wings. The ones that have been chased from normal location and they've went down onto the vulnerable prisoner wing now getting back to the Cartier high securities <clears throat> when these come into the prison nine times out of ten the the very high profile well-known names well-known gangsters from throughout the uk and like i mentioned when everyone's looking out the windows trying to see who it is everyone shouting out the windows to each other saying i wonder who this is the players are starting to buzz a bit thinking who it, who it is and there was quite a few in the time that i was there got moved into the prison but i'll tell you another reason why you get helicopter support as well is for the category a prisoners <clears throat> some of them that are going to the outside hospital now I'll give you an instance on one of them I've spoke about it in one of my previous videos that I've done quite a quite a long time ago. And it was there uh, Andy Shack. The re his second name Shackley, anybody used to get called Andy Shack. He was in the gym training. And I was in the gym at the time. And he had about 140 kilos doing a behind neck press. And the lads I was standing spotting him 
didn't clip the weights back onto the rack and it went down and his arm got stuck behind and his arm just snapped clean and half from there and you heard the big snap noise like that now it took i think it was round about something between round about six to eight hours to get him to the hospital because they had to get helicopter support i don't think he was high risk at the time but i know he was category a so because he was category a in prison they've got cat ear vans which is different to the normal transportation vans normal vans <clears throat> for transporting category b's and c's and d prisoners and you won't get on those vans but the category a vans especially the cut the cut a high risk vans or the ones with the big orange stripe down the side and you have to have police escort with these type of prisoners because they're so high profile so andy shack had to get police escort and they had to get a helicopter escort <clears throat> again they do all these procedures just in case you're trying to fake a breakout not fake a breakout, sorry, trying to fake an injury or something to try and get a breakout, whereas a prisoner could be getting transported to the hospital and you've arranged for whatever to happen on the outside. So this is the lengths that they go to to stop these type of things from happening. So they get helicopter support and police escort. So that day, like I've mentioned, it took eight hours to get Andy Shacklady to the hospital with a broken arm. So you can imagine how much pain you must have been in waiting eight hours to get to the hospital. But I, and, I, and I imagine the nurses and the ambulances will have come into the prison and given some sort of pain relief whilst he was waiting to go to the hospital. But a couple of the other high-risk um, category A, high-risk inmates that got transported there in the time that I was there was David Bieber and Colin Gunn, because I think, I believe Colin Gunn come just after I landed um, and he was another one that got transported we're well, not transported but he got helicopter trans uh, helicopter assistance and police escort because of the such high profile cases they couldn't risk any type of thing going wrong in the transportation period but um I just thought I would clear that up because a lot of people have been asking to see and um how do high risk prisoners get transported because a lot of people think they're in the shackles like when they're in america you're all tied up looking like hannibal lecter strapped her in a strapped her a big chair and put inside of the van or wheeled in on a big wheel <laughs> um but again people's imaginations if they haven't been in these situations and they haven't been in the high risk or the high security prison sorry they don't know what goes on so they come up with all different things in their head um, and some of them have been asking me comments so that's the reason why i've done this video to put people in the picture about what happens when the category a high risk prisoners are getting transported um so there was colin gunn david bieber dennis Slade. these were the ones that were cut a high risk in the time that i was there the ones off the top of my head they're the ones that stand out the ones that i can remember but again once they come off the high risk because a lot of prisoners colin gunn has been the longest serving inmate who has been double cut here cut here high risk he's still category high risk now after <clears throat> i think it's around about 18 years he's been that and it's normally the only the first year or two when these prisoners are high profile when they come into prison they're normally category here high risk for about a year or two maybe three years until Obviously, the prison have been able to observe them, can see that they don't really pose that much of a risk. They're in prison. A lot of people that are in prison, everyone's is, even though these type of people have got massive pull on the outside, big time gangsters, a lot of them, and they've got a lot of money, the millionaires. And this is the reason why they get put on high risk as well, because they've got the means, the funds um, to orchestrate and escape on the outside. So they need to keep an eye on them. 24 hours a day seven days a week every hour of the day to ensure that they're not trying to escape because again it would make a mockery of the prison system if someone's category a high risk and they've managed to get out but there was only about two or three say you've got the category a high risk and you've got the category a high risk or and you've also got the a list which is an escape list which is sometimes I've heard other inmates refer to them as triple cat here, but it's category A high risk, escape risk. And these ones that are escape risk are put in a banana suit, or that we refer to them as banana suit. It's a track suit, 
which is half yellow, half blue on the top and bottom. I think in some of the other prisons where I have seen pictures where they are different colours, but in the time when I was in, it was yellow and blue, and we used to call them the banana suits. And again, the prisoners that I've seen with them on was the likes of David Bieber, who was the cop killer from America. And um, there was a couple of lads as well that these were Category B inmate, inmates. So Category B in, inmates can also be classed as A-list and put in these banana suits as well. It doesn't have to be a Category A prisoner. These Category B prisoners were a few lads from down Liverpool who had been on the hooch in Franklin. And they decided that they didn't want to go back to their own pads because they were having so much fun getting pissed up with each other. And they had some hooch left and it was bang up time. So what they went and done was they went and filled the beds up with pillows. So it looked as if someone was underneath them and they bulked the bed up and they left them there. They went and shut the door, left them and left the pillows under the duvet inside the pad, went out, slammed the door, went into the other inmate's pad. So when the screws come round doing the checks, looked through it looked as though they were asleep. And they actually got away with this until five o'clock in the morning. Because five o'clock in the morning, when they do the roll checks, it's between it's about five, six o'clock in the morning before the night staff leaves and this and the daytime staff come on. So when this the nighttime staff are going round doing the checks at five or six in the morning, sometimes nearly always try and wake you up or they'll look through and if they can't see your head or your hand hanging out the bed they'll rattle your door a little bit until you go like that to show them that you're actually in there and one of the inmates when they were rattling his door at 5 five thirty in the morning he was unresponsive but all of us on the wing that knew what was going on as soon as you heard that rattle it woke everybody up and the screw shouting through Put your hand up if you're awake or if you can hear us. And he got no response, so immediately press this at the alarm bell. The alarm bell's going off. Staff are running onto the wing. And they opened his door, went inside and found that he wasn't there. So obviously, as you can imagine, the whole prison, even though it was early in the morning, we're on lockdown anyway. The prison is put on lockdown. Nobody leaves the prison, even the staff. <coughs> Excuse me. Nobody leaves the prison at all. Because it looks as though three inmates have escaped. Or was it two inmates, sorry, who were in the other inmates' pad. So what this done then was, obviously all the screws come onto the wings from the other wings. All the daytime screws are coming in. And the whole wing is swarmed with screws. And they're going through each and every pad looking for these inmates. And they found them under the bed of one of the other scouts' pads. And that was... That got all those put on A list, even though they were category B. They didn't get put. They didn't get classes cut here. Then put on A list. They were just put as A list and put in these banana suits. And they were made to wear these for around about I think it was about two or three months. They had to wear them, just to make an example of them. Even though they were still on the wing, they hadn't escaped. It was still classed as an escape, so they were put inside or put in the A list banana suits. Well, I thought I would just clear a few things up there. People, let you all know what's happening in the category A prisons with the high-risk inmates and the A-list inmates. But again, if you are enjoying the content, remember to comment, like, and subscribe. And if you are wanting exclusive content, some of the stuff I might not be putting on YouTube, I put on my um, Patreon channel. If you do want to support the channel and go and get exclusive content, go to the link in the description, click on that, and join the group if you want. It's entirely up to you. But thanks for watching, people. Take care.